Democrats are panicked that they peaked too early with three weeks to go before the midterms. But hey, like Jesse in high school, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> the party of woke scolds and gender studies grads now realizing that the momentum they had over the summer is melting away faster than Joe Biden's ice cream. One lefty mourning the impending doom saying, quote, I'm wishing the election were in August. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jack, they're still in November. The reason why Democrats are throwing a pity party now is because of a batch of polls that has Republicans pulling away including a brutal New York Times one that shows independent women swingly, swingly, swinging sharply <laughs> toward Republicans in the span of a month. But Nancy Pelosi still in total denial. Let's talk about rising inflation concerns along with crime, giving momentum, new momentum to Republicans after the Democrats were closing the gap. I think that much of what you've said I don't agree with. That is okay. to say, the New York Times poll, I think, is an outlier poll. What we have been through with the legislation under the leadership of President Biden, who has done a spectacular job. He's had a better two years than most uh, presidents that you can name, certainly in the recent generations. Yeah, goodbye. And Joy Behar failing to live up to her name again. The View co-host is upset that voters are more focused on pocketbook <laughs> issues. Well, what's depressing is that the New York Times released a poll today that says that 71% of voters agree that democracy is under threat. Yeah. But only 7% of voters uh, rank a threat to democracy as a major issue this election cycle. Yeah. I find that so depressing. I can't begin to tell you. That's yeah. why I don't like polls. <laughs> Yeah. I don't like polls. Dana, that tells you everything. They really wanted it to be about January 6th. They did, but the thing is that she, was, like, she says it's so depressing that people are think that democracy is in peril. But they, the Democrats were the ones funding mm -hmm. the very candidates now that they're worried about getting elected. Right. So congratulations. You know, your mission accomplished. Throw back to yesterday. Um, one of the things about them, the Democrats, is they just spent all their money way too early on an issue that was going to go away. So it's like, imagine I did this beautiful etching sketch, and then Greg comes along and knocks it out of my hands and shakes it all up, and it's gone. You're like, well, wait, I just wasted $100 million mm -hmm. on something that um, I'm not going to be able to run on. Today, the Senate minor Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer, says, we're going to do this, uh, mag we're going to go after the MAGA Republicans by having a bill to codify Roe v. Wade, which is kind of weird because the Supreme Court just said there's no uh, constitutional right to an abortion, but go ahead, pass the bill and have the Supreme Court knock it down again, fine. But that tells me that they've just spent m hundreds mm -hmm. of millions of dollars on abortion ads, but mm -hmm. they're not willing to say where they are on, on abortion. These last three weeks of the debates have been more about the Democrats having to defend their position about abortion all the way up till birth, mm -hmm. rather than on the limited version that most Americans want. So they're in a little bit of a pickle. Yep, going all in on abortion. All right, Piers. <laughs> President Biden had been lecturing you Brits about the economy. <laughs> so now it's your chance to respond. Well, first of all, thank you for having me back. I don't know if any of you actually knew I was coming back, or even <laughs> if you agreed to me having uh, me back. But, but I'm gr grateful to be here. And, yes, what do they feel about President Biden munching his massive ice cream, which, Jesse, I have to say, hat tip to you, your denunciation of the ice cream eating. <laughs> no man should ever be seen eating a gigantic cone. The only thing I would have added to your brilliant, brilliant assessment of how inappropriate it was is that it was also inappropriate because actually what he was doing with that cone in his hand was revealing the wider truth about the economy. Ice cream prices are up about 13% because dairy farming costs have gone yeah. through the roof. Why have they gone through the roof? Why is milk so expensive? Because of inflation. Biden can keep saying there's zero inflation. There's 8.2% inflation. That is now rippling through everybody's lives and making everything very expensive. So I just see a president who, when he says the, the US economy is strong as hell, and starts lecturing the British Prime Minister, who, by the way, he's right about one thing, she is utterly useless. <laughs> and, in fact, even by the time we come off air, she may no longer right. be <laughs> British Prime Minister. So, on, on the factual side, he's correct. But he is the... I made a point in my New York Post column yesterday. It would be like Kim Kardashian lecturing people on being talentless wastrels. Mm -hmm. She might be right, but she's not the right person to deliver <laughs> that message. Yeah. And I felt that about Biden. It's like, come on. Look at your own backyard before you lecture the rest of the world about the economy. And he seems to me to be suffering from what I call acute delusion. It's like me looking out here, seeing the clear blue lovely sky of this beautiful sunny day, 
in New York City and saying it's pouring with rain and pitch black. You would all look at me and go, no, it's not, Piers, it's blue. I would say, no, it's not. It's raining and it's pitch black. And you'd say, the, ma the man's completely nuts. Mm. He's lost <laughs> his marbles. That's where I am with, I'm afraid, yes. the leader of the free world. He is saying things which simply aren't true. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the midterms, I think, my prediction, the American people who know it's untrue because they're paying the extra costs every day, they are going to vote accordingly. Yes, that's the thing, Judge. We're people are seeing his, his acts, the consequences of his presidency. It, what Pierce says is exactly right. The American people know that it's untrue. So if you think about what they tell us that we can verify or confirm, I mean, it's not all of a sudden that this is the first time they're lying to us from Washington. But I really want to talk about the abortion issue for just a, a second because I think it's so, so important. First of all, people think that women vote on one issue only, and they don't. And it's about time that they recognize women as more than just women who are concerned about, people concerned about abortion, okay? They were so invested in this issue after the official decision was leaked by the Supreme Court that they allowed for the disruption for months for six weeks, at least seven weeks after the decision came out, of people going in front of the justice's home, the attempted assassination on Justice Kavanaugh. And all of the outrage, that's how they were playing it out. So it wasn't just the ads, and of course they spent millions, you're right, Dana, ahead of time on these ads on abortion, but they made the world, America at least, look at all this lunacy that no one was buying into because the people who were watching it were, had to go to the store and figure out how much money they had for dinner for the week for their kids and how far they could drive. Mm -hmm. So you know what? They may have peaked too early, and I think it's 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 not just that they peaked too early. I think that the Republicans are seeing and have a hands-on what's going on. And we should feel sorry, by the way, because mm -hmm. peaking too early is a medical condition. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. I actually do want to extend my sympathy to all Democrats <laughs> yes. who peak too early. Yes. I, I believe we have a number of those commercials that were <laughs> yes. during this show. Usually a guy in a classic car. Jogging on the beach. <laughs> you know, Jesse, yes. um, my theory is that nobody bought the garbage about the Inflation Reduction Act because when you lo re looked at the redu redu Inflation Reduction Act, there was no inflation reduction. Right. So we, we could no longer trust anything that they had to say. Right. First, I take issue with your intro. I peaked in middle school, <laughs> not high school. Here's what happened. The Democrats are saying they peaked in August. What was everybody doing in August? We were on vacation. Mm -hmm. We were drunk. We were tan. We weren't watching television. We weren't paying attention to what Democrats in D.C. were doing. We were with our families and we were enjoying life. I was actually in a maximum security prison interviewing <laughs> serial killers. Okay. <laughs> I love to say that in there. I was here at the table. <laughs> That's a vacation. I was for doing you. charity work. With really? The, with I the was orphans. off all of August. Yeah. If you, noticed. you were on holiday. <laughs> they got lucky when they caught a trend they had nothing to do with. Because remember, the market rallied in August off the summer lows and gas prices came down off the summer highs. They had nothing to do with either of those things. Once people get back in session in September, demand is up for gasoline, they're going back to work and they're watching TV and paying attention, and gas prices go up and mortgage rates skyrocket and people start focusing on the failures of the Democrats, and that's when things got bad. The elites have never paid any attention to inflation, and who's the guy that, chief of staff, Ron Klain, he gave it away early last year when he said inflation is a high class problem. They've never understood yeah. how middle class and lower class workers have to deal with high prices. They've been completely detached this entire time and they're going to pay for it. I actually, and I don't like Nancy Pelosi, I'm with Nancy on this. You have to just continue to claim you're going to win this thing. Yep. <laughs> right? Like, the guy that leaked this thing, the Politico, that says, it's not looking too good for Democrats. We peaked early. He should be brought outside and shot <laughs> because that's off message. You have to stay on message. But remember Donald Trump was like, it's actually going to be a red wave. <laughs> yeah. Like, you got to go in just to keep the troops motivated. So I understand what she's saying. And, Piers, you and I don't agree on much, especially with weapons. <laughs> But a man should never lick an ice cream cone never, in public. Never, never, never. It's like talking about Christmas before December the 1st. Mm. That's right. It should actually That's be, right. a, it should be a criminal offense. It's yes. sacrilegious. Right. Lock him up. That's yep. what I say. Blast By the way, you know what a real high-class problem is? Is the wokeism.
You're right. They, that's, yeah. that's the high-class problem. You're right. That's what uh, Obama said yesterday. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.